this evening. Housing Authority moves to repossess Providence land sold by BK to buy Shan Lin. Cash Strapped City Hall explores options for garbage collection. New focus for Education Month. Questions raised about vaccines used to treat deadly human papilloma virus. And we take a look at the devastation caused by Hurricane Irma as the powerful storm swept through the Caribbean. From Safe TV headquarters in South Rival Gardens, this is Safe TV Headline News with George Gonzalez. Headline News is now being streamed live on our YouTube channel. Join us. The Central Housing and Planning Authority has moved to the courts in an effort to repossess a 100-acre plot of land of which Chinese firm Bai Shan Lin's GM has majority shares. The property, which was initially bought by BK International, has been advertised for sale after the current owners failed to honor payments. Esther Sobers starts our broadcast this evening with this report. Chinese firm Bai Shan Ling appears to have abundant plans for Sun Lake development. A gated community at Providence and now government through the Central Housing and Planning Authority has moved to the courts to repossess the 100-acre plot of land which was acquired by the company. CHPA revealed that BK on the name Sunset Lakes acquired the land and paid $458 million at the time of the agreement of sale. After acquiring the land from the government, BK International initially resold Sunset Lake to the Chinese developer. For doing so, BK International faces a penalty price of $45.8 million. Under the sales of shares, there was a new Sunset Lake owner who is the general manager of Bai Shang Ling, Cho Hongbo. According to information, he became the sole owner but has not yet met obligations to the local bank which was financing development of the housing project. The court appointed Nigel Hines as the receiver. The CHPA noted that Sunset Lake recently advertised to sell the property. The CHPA on July 20, 2017 moved to the High Court seeking the order to resign the agreement of sale and purchase made by Sunset Lake on February 7, 2014. In addition, the CHPA has sought an order direct and register of lands to recall and cancel certificate of title for the plot of land to have the names re-registered in the name of CHPA. Sunset Lakes, under a Chinese developer, has said it would build 400 luxury homes with various prices, going as much as $105 million. I'm Esther Sov reporting for Channel 2 Headline News. Thanks, Esther. City Hall is seeking to stay on top of its garbage collection efforts, but cost factors forcing the council to make decisions, some of which are not very popular, as you hear in this report. Solid waste management is an expensive and yet essential function within any municipality. It is reasonable for citizens to expect their city's government to provide a reliable and sanitary form of garbage disposal. But, on the same note, the citizens should expect to pay for it. According to Town Clerk Royston King, the cost is a very heavy burden on the cash-strapped capital city. The mathematics is clear. Of the roughly 70 to 80 million dollars in revenue, solid waste management costs the city over 50 million per month. And when you put that against the fact that we've not had a valuation in the city of valuation of properties for over 20 years, and that even the measly amounts that businesses and property owners are expected to pay, they're neglecting to pay that. And when you think that the um, the uh, a substantial portion of our revenue really comes from the collection of rates and taxes or general rates. Again, you get to see why we are in this kind of financial bind. Last month, it was widely reported that Sivan's Waste and Puron Brothers suspended their service after City Council racked up a $300 million debt between the two companies. Many have asked why City Hall allowed the debt to accumulate. Given the small revenue in the face of high costs, this debt may not seem as shocking as it originally appeared. After the service was suspended, some questioned the city's move to abruptly begin using three smaller companies instead of settling their debt. We remain grateful, we're very thankful for what they have done, but the, the fact that they withdrew their, their service 
trigger the emergency clause under the law, and we have no other choice but to put systems in place so that we can uh, secure the integrity of the city. However, we are now getting ready. The chairman of the finance committee is back in the country, in the jurisdiction, and we're now getting ready to engage our contractors and to set new parameters, new conditions. The city will not completely discontinue the use of private contractors, but according to Mr. King, it would behoove city council to reestablish their own sanitation service to reduce their reliance on these contractors. That we are working to take over 60% of the collection and disposal of waste of the city, and the other 40% will go to contractors. So we are moving to do that we're also moving to procure trucks uh, from the uh, from uh, overseas, and uh, because we believe that this is the service that we should we should provide, we should provide it at a very excellent level. The Financial Department of City Council has already calculated that the proposed 60/40 coverage would be much cheaper than the current arrangement. The Ministry of the Presidency has confirmed the passing of Cesar Francis Granger, the brother of President David Granger. He was born the third of eight children to the late Chetwind and Verley Granger on October 4th, 1937. Up until his retirement, Mr. Cesar Francis Granger served as an economist at the Caribbean Community Secretariat. He is survived by his two children and two siblings, including the president. We at Channel 2 Headline News offer our deepest condolences. The indigenous community through the Darwin initiatives is seeking to improve their self-sufficiency so they can apply modern and international best practices in their everyday way of life. Wendell Jeffrey has more. The indigenous community is receiving the support of the Darwin Initiative to improve their self-sufficiency and to allow them to better integrate with modern and international best practices in their everyday way of life. And the community is showing that they are willing and able to step up to the plate. Faye Fredericks from the South Ruperuni region made that notion very clear as she introduced a video that she assisted in putting together. We always look up for help from the top all the time. But during this project, we know this and we, we know to ourselves now that we can handle our own problems um, in the community. Right? We identify our problems and we solve our own, we find a solution to our own problems. The video highlights some of the progress that the First Peoples have made because of the funding provided and their newfound integration desires. They are also taking a lead on the climate change front. You can do it. It was done in the past. Ancestors did it when they answered the call. So there's nature's guardians, they mastered the cause. Now we're resisting the people and they're retreat to the blood. You can do it for the forest and blade. Ancestors did it with only the brains. Now you can bridge technology to traditional days, economic gains, and still fight climate change. One of the programs that is receiving funding is the COBRA project. The COBRA stands for Community Best Practices for Adoptive Management, and it is largely within the Guyana Shield region. Speaking at the residence of the British High Commissioner, Minister Sidney Alicock launched the Darwin Initiative, which is the integration of traditional knowledge within the national discourse. The minister had this to say. My ministry sees this project as one that will see traditional knowledge being incorporated in the biodiversity policy for poverty reduction. But instead of saying poverty reduction, I should have said policy for the elevation or support of the many riches that we have within our community. In Guyana, our traditional knowledge is quickly disappearing. And if we have no proper and approved recorded documentation on traditional knowledge, 
we will certainly lose it. We can, we can only do this in partnership, in uniting to help to allow the knowledge to be shared across Guyana. The consensus of the varied presenters at the launch is that the information which the indigenous people have is the information that will help the world by suggesting behaviors and best practices that will be both biodiverse and eco-friendly. For Channel 2 Headline News, I am Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. We have more news after the break, including the efforts of eight Chinese nationals who wouldn't give up on their Guyanese dream. Stay with us. John Lewis Styles proudly introduces Everest Bags, a complete and affordable line especially suited for back to school. Lunch bags from 3,500, backpacks from 4,500, pulley backpacks from 10,995. Also available are messenger bags, computer bags, waste pouches, duffel bags, gym bags, and even camping bags, all for the same price or less than buying online. And it's already here on Waterloo Street. John Lewis Styles, simply different. On Sunday, September 10, 2017, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is inviting residents of A and B Fields Sophia to a public consultation at the Sophia Primary School. The consultation will address the reformulation of the road network upgrade and expansion program. The project, which will be undertaken through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank, entails road upgrades with street lights and sidewalks, upgrades to playgrounds and community buildings, and subsidies for construction of core houses and home improvements. Starting time, 16 hours. This place is really hot. What's wrong with your AC? It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry you had a hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. Need a ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5594. 5496. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always is Ride Taxi Service. Let's go. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. Welcome back. Thanks for staying. Eight Chinese immigrants who entered Guyana illegally appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan and pleaded guilty through an interpreter. Esther Sobers reports that this is not the first time the eight have been stopped trying to enter Guyana illegally. 
As many will say, you have to try and try again until you succeed. That must have been the mantra for eight Chinese nationals, ages 27 to 40 years old, who allegedly entered Guyana illegally for the third time from Suriname. The eight illegal immigrants appeared before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan, and they all pleaded guilty to an interpreter. The charges stated on September 1st, they attempted to use a permit without it being issued by the relevant authorities. Police prosecutor Arvin Moore told the court that on August 22nd, the defendants came via backtrack. They were caught, charged, and fined $20,000 each and then deported back to Suriname. However, a few weeks later, they persuasively came back to Guyana through a tourist visa by the Suriname Ferry Service and were deported back again as their names were later found on the deportation list, which is valid for one year. Still reluctant to give up, the group returned a week later. Acting on information, the police visited the sleeping hotel where the Chinese nationals were arrested and later fined $70,000. They will be deported again. I'm Esther Sobers reporting for Channel 2 Headline News. Thanks, Esther. The Ministry of Education is celebrating Education Month under the theme Promoting Wellness in Communities Through Quality Education. Among the priorities over the next month are focus on reducing the disparity in education, among other plans. Here's more. Today marks a very significant day in the calendar of the Ministry of Education. That is the launch of Education Month 2017. The theme of this year's Education Month is promoting wellness in communities through quality education. The Ministry of Education's priorities over the next month are focused on reducing the disparity in education, improving the quality of education by embracing the use of technology in classrooms, and improving access by providing more transportation through the 3 Bs initiative. Another element of promoting wellness in communities is to stamp out violence in schools. Chief Educational Officer Marcel Hudson listed some of the programs the ministry has established to address this issue. We have the appointment of counselors in schools, and we're looking at that. We have our HFLD program, Health and Family Life program. We're working together with our PTAs and all our other stakeholders to ensure that we deliver quality education, which means that the environment must be conducive to learning, free from fights, free from, from whatever might be disruptive. So the Ministry of Education, we are well on our way to ensure that our children um, operate in an environment that is conducive to learning. To celebrate Education Month this year, the Ministry of Education has planned a host of events with a special event happening almost every day of the month. A grand rally at Durban Park is slated for September 15th to commemorate National Education Day. Other activities include education in concert, a male engagement program, a reading carnival, and a social event along with other programs in all the regions of Guyana. The Education Month celebrations will culminate on October 5th. The full list of activities is available online. The death toll continues to rise in the developing nations from the deadly human papilloma virus. As the Ministry of Public Health prepares to embark on a nationwide vaccination campaign, many questions are being asked about the drug and its effects. Wendell Jeffrey takes a look. Even if it was stored at the right temperature, for some reason it doesn't work when you shake it. If it does not give you the look that you're looking for, um, you can discard it. As the Ministry of Public Health and PAHO WHO gear up to roll out their HPV vaccination drive across the country, the discussions about the safety and positive effects of the drugs are coming into focus. Here is Dr. William Addo Crow. Once, once I take the, the vaccination today, when am I protected? Is it one week's time? Is it 10 days' time? When, when we give a vaccine, we only give the vaccine into the body. It's up to your body to change it into the antibodies that will then protect you. So we start off with the vaccination. Your body then goes on to do the immunization part. The ministry would like the public to know that the human papillomavirus vaccines, Gardasil 9, Gardasil, and Cervix are safe, 
effective and recommended by the International Center for Disease Control. The authority is saying that the vaccines, like any medicine, can have side effects. Some people report having mild side effects, like a sore arm from the shot. Some people who get the HPV vaccines have no side effects at all. If the vaccines are taken as prescribed, the protection lasts for a lifetime. If you take it, there's a spike. In order not to bring it down, you take the second one, then who takes it, which takes it higher up to a level that takes a much longer time. In this case, it's supposed to be a lifetime. Dr. Arnisa Hamilton says that the health centers will take the lead in the rollout of the vaccines. The ministry would not be doing the work if the health center would not be doing all of the work so the vaccines will be available at the health center. It's the health center staff that will go into the school and their catchment area to immunize their children. Not any of us here. We might show up and data assist, but they're the ones who are taking this forward because it's their population and then you have the trust too person's trusting there. Some of them will have seen the child from the time the child was born, went through the entire system, so you're just protecting your child that you know with something else. The Ministry of Health assures that the integrity of the vaccines are checked and monitored on a daily basis. Every day at the facilities, we take the temperature in the morning and in the afternoon and we plot the graph so that we're able to see if there's any challenges with the blackout. In most facilities, we have what is called a cold pack. All refrigerators have cold packs that are supposed to be frozen. In case of a blackout, it's usually lined at the end of the day, so it still provides that temperature. Every year, there are about 300,000 HPV cancer deaths, or 808 person per day, or 5 person every 10 minutes, who die from HPV-related illnesses. For Channel 2 Headline News, I am Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Still ahead, Hurricane Irma pounds Caribbean islands. Stay with us. Ride around town and beyond? Look no further than Oasis Ride Taxi Service. With affordable prices and some of the best drivers in the business, we've been delivering prompt and reliable service to Guyana for over 16 years. We also offer tours, chauffeur service, and even car rentals. You can call us at 231-5554 or 225-5494. For deals, specials, and more information, find our page on Facebook. Always is ride taxi service. Let's go. On Sunday, September 10, 2017, the Central Housing and Planning Authority is inviting residents of A and B Fields Sophia to a public consultation at the Sophia Primary School. The consultation will address the reformulation of the road network upgrade and expansion program. The project, which will be undertaken through a loan from the Inter-American Development Bank, entails road upgrades with street lights and sidewalks, upgrades to playgrounds and community buildings, and subsidies for construction of poor houses and home improvements. Starting time, 16 hours. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center, where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. AC. It's not working. Well, we wouldn't be able to continue this meeting anymore because this place is extremely hot. Wait, 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 please don't go. Here's a company you can call to get your AC fixed. Action Cool. Honey, what's the dinner? I had a hard day. I'm sorry.
storm you have hard day, but guess what, babe? I didn't cook today because the stove is not working. Having trouble at home or at the office? Then call the professionals at Action Cool. Our fully trained technical team have the skills and experience in repairs of all air conditioned units, refrigerators, gas stoves, washing machines, and a whole lot more. For further information, visit us at 86 Hill and Princess Street, Mandela Avenue, Georgetown, or call us on telephone number 225 7867. John Lewis Styles proudly introduces Everest Bags, a complete and affordable line especially suited for back to school. Lunch bags from 3,500, backpacks from 4,500, pulley backpacks from 10,995. Also available are messenger bags, computer bags, waste pouches, duffel bags, gym bags, and even camping bags, all for the same price or less than buying online. And it's already here on Waterloo Street. John Lewis Styles, simply different. And now, news from the region. The most powerful Atlantic Ocean hurricane in recorded history has roared into the Caribbean. It's 185 mile per hour winds ripping off roofs and knocking out phones. AP science writer Seth Borenstein says Hurricane Irma is, quote, nature at its most fierce. So Hurricane Irma right now is going through the Caribbean. And when it was in the Atlantic, it was the strongest storm ever in the Atlantic Ocean, open Atlantic Ocean. It's still at 185 miles per hour. I've covered hurricanes for more than 25 years. This is unlike anything I've ever seen. Compared to Harvey, which we just saw last week, Harvey was a category four storm. This is a category five storm. This is a couple dozen miles per hour stronger in terms of winds. Harvey was a big rain event. It parked over southeast Texas for days and days, nearly a week. That's why we had up to 50 inches of rain in Harvey. Irma is not going to be as big a rain event. We're talking a foot or so of rain, which is still an awful lot, but when you compare it to Harvey, it seems like nothing. This is going to be a storm surge and a wind event. You can't exaggerate how bad this thing is. This is nature at its most fierce. It's forecast to go just north of Puerto Rico and just south of much of the Bahamas. The Bahamas, Puerto Rico, Cuba, are all, and the Dominican Republic are all in this danger area, the cone of uncertainty. But the current track sort of threads between those islands and then comes up to around the Florida Keys. This is prime hurricane season, so always you have conditions right for hurricanes. But there's a difference between conditions right for hurricane and conditions just perfect for hurricanes. And this is perfect for hurricanes. The water is not just warm, which is what you need for fuel for a hurricane, but it's extra warm. It's about a degree and a half Fahrenheit warmer than it normally is. Oftentimes, hurricanes fight upper level winds that sort of decapitate it. There's no upper level winds out there to, for Irma to fight. You could not ask for better ingredients to make a killer storm, unfortunately. And internationally, the number of Rohingya refugees crossing from Myanmar to Bangladesh has surged, the UN says, with more than 35,000 new arrivals identified in the last 24 hours. More than 123,000 Rohingya are now said to have fled violence in Myanmar's Rakhine state since the 25th of August. The conflict was triggered by an attack by Rohingya militants on police posts. This sparked a military counteroffensive that has forced a flood of Rohingya civilians from their villages. BBC brings us that story. These are the latest batch of Rohingya refugees who have arrived into Bangladesh from Myanmar. Lots of children, as you can see, a lot of women. They've been walking for days. They're exhausted because whatever food they had to eat along the way has long run out. Some of them are dehydrated. But the biggest thing for them is they've made it to relative safety. Now, over on that side is Myanmar's Rakhine state, where over the past few days, we've seen fresh fires break out, apparently from burning villages. There's no way, of course, to verify this. And these people are all fleeing for their lives. What they'll do now is head to any kind of temporary shelter they can find by the side of a hill, inside a building, 
just to get a little bit of protection it's starting to rain the biggest thing now is even though they've got here to safety what will happen to them next they have to be fed and then eventually they need to find some place to live some place to build their lives again and now for the weather report And that's Channel 2 Headline News for this Wednesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to find Channel 2 Headline News on Facebook, YouTube, and ch2headlinenews.com. You can also tune in tomorrow morning at 6.30 for a rebroadcast, and Thursday evening at 7 o'clock for more news. For now, I'm George Gonzalez, signing out from this newscast, saying thank you for welcoming us into your homes, and do have a blessed evening.